Hi, I'm Sindari and I'm from the Desert Winds. And I am Giselle Darkwell from the Iron Mountain. Such a pleasure to have her here today because in 2006 I did a Arts and Science general um, how to garb guideline and she edited it for me. This first part is actually referencing the difference between core garb and field garb, kind of comparing and contrasting. This is meant predominantly, primarily for judges and what they need to look for when they are judging. This is actually from uh, Michael Hammer God's paper on arts and science guidelines that was put out years and years ago. Core garb definition description is any piece of clothing designed primarily to be worn at court or in other decorative non-fighting situations. This is an example of court garb. And the information on that is artistic merit and quality of construction should be considered. Both design and decoration are important and should be evaluated. The decorative aspects and pure beauty of a piece is credited more than the sturdiness and usefulness. The opposite is true of field garb, although both elements are important in both categories. Field garb is any piece of clothing designed primarily to be worn on the fighting fields of Amcar. Clothing meant to be worn on the battlefield or at an event. Artistic merit and quality of construction should also be considered. Design and decoration are important and should be evaluated, but sturdiness and usefulness of the piece are its primary elements. So between the two, you're going to have court garb being out of things such as silk, satin, brocades, or um, lighter weight fabrics. Anything that would rip or wrinkle if you sat in it is not something you want to fight. In field garb, you want it to be more useful. It needs to be tougher. It can be as elegant as court garb, but it doesn't have to be. It can be simple and elegant, or it can be really um, a lot going on. So in this piece, there are lots of things and lots of elements to it, whereas the court garb had not, not so many. Both can have uh, fancy, both can not have, be completely simple. Either is fine. When you're looking at court garb, you want it to um, be well made. There's no excuses for it not to be well made. However, it can be more delicate. You don't need to be able to fight in it to be able to be court garb. This is a well constructed piece made out of satin and a brocade. Neither of these are worth to fight in. You could never fight in this fabric. You. Okay, I will re preface that. Yes, I know plenty of people who have. My husband, Kesgar, being one of them, but shouldn't that being the optimum word because it doesn't hold up. But it is well constructed. The seams are finished, the edges are done, and it is all well made. However, the fabrics are too delicate to be fought in. A high end fighting piece would be something like this, where there's lots of elements. Uh, there are lots of elements of, of delicate work and that there's more work on other pieces. So lots of detail and it could be fighting guard but this is out of a good trigger, multiple layers, nice wide edging that comes to beautiful points. This is good fighting guard. When we talk in the Desert Winds about how we judge, we, we talk in terms of aesthetics, complexity, and execution. And so I was hoping that you may be able to, to break down what a judge needs to look for aesthetically, but then also what makes a piece more complex? What makes, what makes this tunic um, or another tunic a 3-0, a 4-0, a 5-0? This is a great example of a 3-0, possibly a 3-4-0 if it wasn't dirty and wrinkled. When people have given out their pieces beforehand and have a return to be judged, but it's dirty, it's wrinkled, or it's been ripped. All of those are elements that will lower your a score. Now, a score should be have a, a nice baseline. A nice baseline is something well constructed, isn't going anywhere. This has basic rolled hems. It has a facing. This one has an unfinished edge of a facing, which is a lower score. But again, this is a great example of a 3-0 score. Finished edges, all finished edges. The seams are done. There is a single seam that's been pulled over, but it has only got one layer of a seam, and it hasn't been fringed, or turned over, or sewn finished. again. It's finished. Finished. This is not a finished seam. But it will hold together. It will be fine, but it is not of great quality. This will not hold together forever. However, with the unfinished seams, 
that can fray. So that actually would lower the score. I would have raised the score because it had a decorative trim in the stitching, but I now lowered the score back down to the 3-0 because the seams only had one stitch. A better score would be something similar to this. This, in my mind, fits the wearer a little too tightly for fighting garb. It fits too tightly under the arms and at the waistline. It should be a little have more ease. The piece I showed you before that was very, very tight, that was meant to be very, very tight. This is a tunic. It's not meant to be as tight as it was made. But the purple was meant to be extraordinarily tight. That kind of tightness, because it has no sleeves and it had no kick on the side, is meant to be worn very tightly and there's no possibility of it ripping anyway because it was grommeted. So that makes a difference. But for standard tunics, which is the 90% of what is turned into Amcar for Amcar fighting, okay, it's gonna be something similar to this. This has beautiful neckline, fully finished. Their stitching is wide enough to fully cover in and you can feel the interfacing that was used to help it hold for thing. In 20 years, this neckline will still be as beautifully stiff as it is today, and it will still hold up. It has lovely stitching, and you can tell that this was hand-stitched and embroidered instead of machine done. Machine done will not have this kind of, of writing that you can tell. Uh, usually, you can tell between machine done and hand done, especially in lettering. It has multiple elements, so there are at least two colors, and there's this lovely edging and almost an epaulette into the seam of the shoulder. I just interject, when you talk about elements, you're talking about a layering, and that's where the complexity pieces come in. Correct? Right. Like so this is, another, this is another element. This is at least a 4-0. Some might even go higher than that because you can see, again, more of that beautiful um, embroidery work. Again, now this is fully edged. No seams are sticking out. Um, and this edge is finished beautifully so it this is its bias tape but they've rolled it the other direction and made it a um again this is a it could have been turned under but because they used a coordinating fabric they turned it on the outside so now she has a beautiful inside as well as outside that's another element to, to give extra points it shouldn't Bad insides should not count against it, but good insides should count towards it. So this is another element. So this is probably at least a 4-0, if not a 4-5, once you turn it around and look at the back. Again, because of all of this work, more elements, more designs, more embroidery, all beautiful edges coming to nice points, um, those are all elements that will give extra credit. So this is probably a 4-5 to a 4 eight depending on the person judging. This has gores in it. That changes it from a plain tee tunic to a gored tunic. If it had a full sweep, so it would literally look like a bell on the bottom, that is called a bell tunic or a Celtic tunic, and those have a lot more work on them because there's such a larger amount of fabric, lots more embellishment is required, and it doubles to triples the amount of time to work on, on that kind of edging because there's just that much more fabric. Oh, and the horse masseuse is another one. Those are the longer tunics. Now this one is the length of a horseman's tunic. This one I would still only give a 3-0 because of the quality of the make and it's dirty, has edges, and is very wrinkled. These are elements when you're judging, you need to take into consideration. This shows a lack of effort on the part of those being judged. If you are going to hand out items, they need to know that they need to get that item back early. Wash that item. Um, hopefully the person wearing it was, cons was conscientious enough to not to stain that item uh, before they had the chance to enter it. But if so, they got the stain out. They've ironed it. This kind of uh, quality would now, where it was a 3-0, oh, maybe a, a 3-5 to start with, would now be down to a 2-5 in my world because of the stains, the wrinkling, and the lack of effort made for an entrance. Another element for people to think about, well, it shouldn't matter, but always does, having a pretty model. model. And have a model. Now, if your model is not an attractive person, you may not want to display your item on said person, but if they are, you're upping, you can't laugh because you know you're pretty, okay? But if you have a pretty individual to be the one to, for your judges to look at, 
it will, um, it, it does help. But judges, remember that may be a trick that they're playing on you. Keep in mind, I would say the presentation should give a, a half a point for presentation. However, it shouldn't give you two points because she's pretty does not make it worth two, an extra full point. So when you have really good fighting guards, it almost could be considered court guard. If you could actually enter it either direction because of the amount of embellishment and about the intricacy of the layers, you could totally pull this off at, and argue the point of court guard. Yes, you can have broadcloth as feast guard. As a judge, you have to decide whether or not this piece is intricate and delicate enough to be considered, not necessarily delicate, it doesn't have to be delicate to be court guard, but it needs to be a step above what you would consider fighting guard. So this is still fighting guard, and because of the intricacy and the, delic and the number of layers and the amount going on, um, this would be considered a really good piece because there's a lot more going on and the amount of work is in it. We're talking of uh, four to uh, five, depending on the judge, on who, on what they would consider it. This is all now points. Now, aesthetically, you can say that. Now you're gonna get down to the nitty picky. But correct, right now, we're just talking about the aesthetics in the two different types. So while this could be considered court garb, it is considered fighting garb because it is durable enough. The grommets are, are the thicker, well more made kind, not the little tiny ones that come out really easily. The, the fabric used is good, a stretchy fabric, so it has movement. So when, even she was to bend over or pulled or get tugged on, all of that would still be completely, completely acceptable. So this is a very good example of excellent fighting garb. Now when we get into the elements of good court garb, it can be very simple. This, is a, this would not be worn by itself. That's an element to think about. You want layers. When it comes to court guard, period pieces, even I would say fantasy pieces, should have multiple layers. Your shirt should be separate. When you wear clothes to school or to work, your suit coat does not fit on top, it's not attached to the shirt that you wear underneath. Nor should your undershirt be attached to your jerkin or your doublet. This is this is an element of bad. Construction. This is what of bad complexity. It doesn't have the elements that would be necessary. The layers aren't there. It won't have the fullness. It doesn't have the interchangeability. It's not as good. It's still at least a 3-0. I would say if the complexity is there and the interest is there and the quality is there, it's still at least a 3-0. However, it is not going to be at a level of a 5. It certainly will never be the level of 5. It doesn't matter how much beautiful work is done to it because the level of complexity isn't there. So in another uh, element of court garb, here's another tunic, exactly the same shape and style as a fighting tunic. But because it is made out of a brocade satin, you would never fight in this. You could, but you shouldn't. But the edges are finished. They are beautiful, they are done. This means that this for what it's going to be used for, it will be able to be used for 20, 30 years. This gorgeous shirt could be, if the, the, the sleeves were shorter, could be worn over this beautiful green and worn like this. It's the layering effect that gives something a more interesting appeal. In fact, if they put it in together as a full piece, this is what gets you above that 3 -0. This is what gets you into that 4 and the 5 in court garb. This is a piece, this is a good example of a pretty piece that could have been a great piece. This, the underskirt is attached. The undersleeve is attached. With the two separate pieces, it would have a more fullness and it would have a more useful appeal because she could use this underdress with other pieces. She could have used this with a different underdress and that would have felt almost as a new dress. While when you're judging, you shouldn't be judging on the usefulness of the piece, but it is part of the aesthetic. This is another example of while this has a broadcloth trim and a, with the same inset here, it has trim. This has a much more delicate trim. You wouldn't want this on this delicate fabric. It wouldn't work. However, you would never want this beautiful, delicate lace on a fighting tunic. When you consider a fighting tunic, a good row is, can you wash it in the washing machine on high? If you can do that, it's a fighting tunic. If you can't, it is court garb and you need it. It's a new set of rules, but it needs to be beautiful and really well executed because now 
Everybody's going to be checking those seams. Everybody's going to be checking the delicacy. Whereas a fighting tunic, if your trim at the very bottom isn't completely straight, no one is ever going to notice. However, if your hem at the bottom of a dress isn't completely straight, they will notice. So these are the things to think about when, when you're entering and judging the two. When judging awareness of the two pieces, help your entrance know the difference. My, my rule of thumb is if you can wash it in the washing machine, you can consider it field guard, even if it's as delicate and as beautiful, not delicate, that piece wasn't delicate. The purple uh, with the young lady in it, this would be, it's still field guard, but, and it's still washable. So therefore, even though it had multiple layers and a lot going on, it was still good enough and stiff enough and durable enough, that's the real word I'm looking for, is durable enough to be considered court, uh, field guard. Anything else, if it's not durable enough, then it needs to be considered court guard. Then if it's court guard, you need to look for the delicate and the intricacy of the piece. Okay. Thank you.